Good morning, everybody. Happy December. This is my attempt at vlogging. <laughs> so we're gonna see how it goes. Welcome to States and Locks. My name is Esther, and today we're just gonna be doing a long, long, long overdue update about my hair. Yeah? I mean, because what else do we talk about on this channel? Steaks and locks, right? So, seven months. It's been seven months since I locked my hair. And while other people's journeys are usually, I don't know, oh, nothing much is happening with my hair. Nothing much has changed. I don't have much of an update. I have all the updates. I have all the updates, I have all the changes, all the things are happening with my hair. First and foremost, um, I am, I guess, having lock reg regrets, you know, I'm kind of regretting the way I started my locks, not the locks themselves. I wish I had started with twists because my hair texture just loves to just eat up that braid pattern and doesn't want to disappear. On top of that, I don't have any volume. I just feel like my hair is still flat. I do things to help make it more voluminous, like doing braids out, braid outs and whatever, but for the most part, I feel like I'm lacking a lot of volume. Um, and so if anybody out there is considering braid locks, just maybe you you maybe you'll have a different experience from me but for me my experience is that i don't like the flatness so instead of just dealing with it like a psychopath i started taking down the braid the braided area of my hair and just twisting it up and i've done about like this front this front and this front of my hair and then i kind of just quit I realize that that's a lot of work and I'm never going to be able to take my hair all the way down because the back of my locks are interlocked with the part that unraveled. I had a lot of unraveling about four weeks into my journey and so I interlocked the end of my lock. So I have an interlocked end, I have a middle braid and then I have the interlocked root. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure that I kind of want to do all that. but. From the little that I've done in the front, the part I've taken out, I can already see like the volume. Like, you know, I have so much volume. And so, um, so I've been doing a lot with my hair. I feel like I've been in my hair a lot, which my husband is not a fan of because he likes seeing his wife, not his wife with his hands in her hair. Um, so reties. So I decided to go on an experiment and prolong my reties to 12 weeks. Oh my god, that was a horrendous mistake. That was a nightmare. That was a nightmare. I have to admit, my my, it took forever and a day. It took me two weeks, two weeks to retie. There was matting. My locks were married. I mean, my locks were in long-term relationships. Okay, they were in there, they were engaged, they had courted, okay, and they had 55 year old marriages in there. It was just too much. And I have become tender headed um, since getting locks. And so the lock popping and the ripping and the scissors just did not do well for my head. And so, if the goal of prolonging, for me, I went in with a goal of. Um, I don't have time and maybe interlocking too frequently will cause thinning. Well, if interlocking too frequently causes thinning, waiting too long will lose, will make you lose your hair. Because I was pulling and I, I had to, ugh, it was awful. Another, another caveat to that is I had a lot of growth. I was doing um, eight rotations. I mean, going one, two, three, four, eight times. Um, and some of my hair was growing out of my locks it was just not fun so I you know I know there you know Tunisia Ali just really preaches um, extending your lock um, reties 
but I think it's different when you do it yourself, right? So if you're gonna go to a loctician and she's gonna kind of just do most of the work, all the work, if I, if I may say so, it's different. But if you're gonna do it yourself, I don't, I don't know, I guess with my hair texture and the way my locks are growing out of, are growing, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. So I didn't. I did four, I waited six weeks the next time. And that was the person, that was the sweet spot. Six weeks was the sweet spot. I switched from a four point rotation to a two point rotation. Uh, why did I ever even think I could do a four point rotation? Two point rotation is just so easy. You can, and because I am lacking volume and I need my, my locks to be a little, you know, voluminous, a two point rotation is what's gonna is what's working for me. I get less marrying, I get less um, like combining two locks. I actually went through a whole session without combining a single lock. It was a breeze. It took me three days, and those three days were me waking up in the morning, doing a couple hours, doing a couple hours in the afternoon, and then a couple hours at night in between my kiddos. So, um, six weeks was the magic number. Six weeks was the magic number. And it just made my reties not so awful. I mean, maybe once my locks are matured and they know where to lay and they know where to like go, I won't have to do that. Um, but not working 12 weeks didn't work maybe I'll try eight weeks we'll see how this cookie crumbles so wash days wash days have still been a breeze I started braiding and banding because the unraveling was getting a little much my hair is soft so braiding and banding has helped a lot I actually am down to washing my hair every two months at that I have an oil mist that I spray my scalp with and that's just done wonders. I don't have any dandruff, I don't have any itching. Um, I do walk shake, you know, just to get all the lint out and I don't think that ever will ever be a time where I shake it and it comes out clear. I think it's just you retain a lot of that stuff, a lot of lint. I don't have any lint, like per se, that I can see in my hair but when I do a lock shake, I get a lot of white stuff coming out. And it could be dandruff could be flaky. I don't know. It didn't bother me. You can't see it until I shake it. Uh, so what have we been eating? So I am a person that thrives off of eating a lot of fat. And I feel better when I eat fat. Not just like fat from butter, but I feel better when I eat beef fat trimmings. And so I went back on, got my fat trimmings, got them out, ground them up, cook them like ground beef, and I eat them with every meal. And that's just been oh, just wonder the way my body feels when I'm satiated. I don't crave anything. I can just eat my meal and go about my day. And I'm stuffed. I'm stuffed. So my journey is going great. I'm telling you, I'm fitting in size zero pants, size one pants. And I just could not imagine that for myself. I just can't believe that. I can't believe the energy I have, the way I look, my body composition. 